Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting topic to cover, setting up and configuring PFSense, a powerful open-source firewall and routing platform. Whether you're a small business owner, a home network enthusiast, or just looking to enhance your network security, PFSense has got you covered. In this video, we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up and configuring PFSense for your specific needs. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Before we jump into the setup, Let's briefly discuss what PFSense is. PFSense is an open-source firewall and routing platform based on FreeBSD. It provides advanced features typically found in expensive, high-end commercial firewalls. I have already installed PFSense on a virtual box. If you want to experiment or learn how to configure PFSense, watch the videos in the description on how to install PFSense on VirtualBox and VMware. The installation process on a physical machine is the same you just need to create a bootable USB drive and boot from it on the physical machine and follow the installation steps. PFSense initially assigns the LAN interface the default static IP version 4 address of 192.168.1.1 and configures the WAN interface to use DHCP, so it will pick up an IP address from your service provider if you have connected the WAN part directly to the internet. This is my setup. I have three network cards on the PFSense, one for the local area network, one for the WAN which is connected to the internet and one for the OPT. The OPT interface in PFSense stands for Optional Interface. It's an additional network interface provided by PFSense that can be configured for various purposes. The OPT interface allows you to create additional network segments on your PFSense firewall. This can be useful for segmenting different parts of your network, like guest networks, IoT devices, or specialized services. Opt interfaces are highly customizable. You can configure them to be LAN-like, WAN-like, or for specialized purposes like DMZ demilitarized zone configurations. The setup of various networks is up to your needs. You can add more interfaces if you want. But this is a typical configuration of a small office or home network. I will use the Ubuntu machine to connect to the PFSense using the browser. Connect to the LAN interface, open your web browser, and navigate to the IP version 4 address you assigned to the LAN interface to access the PFSense web configurator. The default login is admin and the password is PFSense. The first time you log into a new installation of PFSense, you will be greeted by the PFSense setup wizard so you can carry out initial configurations. You can also access the wizard from the system menu. This is the welcome screen. Click next to proceed. To continue with the configuration process using the wizard, click next once more after the following screen, which provides information about the support options available from Netgate. NetGate is a company that specializes in providing hardware and software solutions for network security and routing. They are best known for their association with the PFSense open source firewall and routing platform. In the general information, enter a host name. This name can be used to access the firewall instead of the IP address. The domain field can be filled in with any fully qualified domain name of your choice. I will leave the host name at the default. If your service provider configures your service through DHCP, the DNS fields will likely be filled in automatically upon connection. However, if you intend to utilize a static WAN IP address or prefer to use alternative DNS providers, you should input at least a primary DNS address at this stage. If you don't know what DNS servers to use, we recommend using Google's DNS servers. Click on Next when done. In the time server information, specify a time zone and leave time server host name at the default, then enter your time zone.
The WAN interface represents the external public IP address that the firewall will utilize to communicate with the Internet. DHCP is the default and most widely used type of WAN interface, especially for home and small office users. For regular home users and small office users, the default settings for the other items on this page should suffice. On this wizard page, you can adjust the LAN IP address and subnet mask. If you need to change the LAN IP address, input it here along with the new subnet mask. Remember, if these settings are modified, you'll also need to adjust the IP address of the computer used to complete the wizard, especially if it's connected through the LAN. You can now change the administrative password for the GUI. Make sure to enter a strong password. Click on the Reload button to reboot the PFSense so the changes take effect. Click Finish to complete and exit the wizard. Upon completing or exiting the wizard, when you first load the dashboard, the firewall will present a notification modal dialog containing the copyright and trademark notices. Please read through them and click accept to proceed to the dashboard. You are now presented with the dashboard. Important system information is shown here. You can access the options for configuring the DHCP server on the LAN interface by navigating to Services then DHCP Server. From this page, you have the ability to enable or disable DHCP for the LAN. Additionally, this section provides the capability to assign static IP addresses to hosts. This can be particularly useful, for instance, when assigning static IP addresses to servers and network devices such as managed switches and network printers. By default, web browsers may offer to save login credentials for the web configurator. To prevent browsers from prompting to save credentials, go to System Advanced, then click on Admin Access. From there, select Disable Web Configurator Login Autocomplete. Just untick the box to disable Web Configurator Login Autocomplete. While PFSense is primarily managed through its web configurator, it does offer some configuration options via its console menu. By default, PFSense does not secure this menu, meaning that anyone with physical access to the PFSense machine can gain root-level shell access. To enhance security, on this same page at the bottom select the option to password protect the console menu. Save the changes when done. By default, PFSense blocks LAN hosts from accessing your public IP addresses, which can be inconvenient, especially when testing port forwarding from within the LAN. To modify this behavior, go to System Advanced, then Firewall and NAT. Depending on your needs, you can choose either NAT plus proxy or pure NAT from the drop-down list under NAT Reflection Mode for port forward. PFSense provides a comprehensive package system that allows you to expand its functionalities. To access a list of available packages, go to System Package Manager then Available Packages. This is where you can explore and install additional software packages. In PFSense, packages are add-on software modules that can be installed to extend the functionality of the firewall and routing platform. These packages provide additional features and capabilities beyond the core functions of PFSense. Packages are designed to enhance and customize PFSense to suit specific network requirements. 
They can include tools for security, monitoring, reporting, caching, VPN, and more. Categories of packages for example are as follows. Security category. This category includes packages like Snort Intrusion Detection System, Suricata, and others that enhance network security and threat detection. Monitoring and reporting category. Packages like Bandwidth D, and Tom, and others provide tools for monitoring network traffic, bandwidth usage, and generating reports. VPN and tunneling category. Packages such as OpenVPN Client Export, Soft Ether VPN, and others offer additional VPN protocols and configurations. Web proxy and content filtering category. Packages like Squid Proxy Server and Squid Guard provide web caching and content filtering capabilities. Remember, before installing any packages, it's a good practice to back up your PFSense configuration to ensure you have a restore point in case of any unforeseen issues. Initially, configuring NAT port forwarding and firewall rules in PFSense may seem challenging. However, as you become more familiar with the system, you'll discover its remarkable flexibility and power. To set up port forwarding, Navigate to Firewall then NAT, and for configuring Firewall Rules, head to Firewall then Rules. By default, PFSense's web configurator employs HTTPS on port 443. Accessing it remotely is as simple as visiting your WAN address. However, it's worth noting that some ISPs block incoming port 443 traffic. To address this, you can select an alternative TCP port by going to System then Advance then Admin Access and entering the desired port number in the TCP port field. Afterward, click Save. Additionally, you'll need to create a new firewall rule under Firewall then Rules, allowing a connection on the WAN interface to pass through to PFSense's Web Configurator server using the port you've specified. In PFSense, interfaces act as the bridges, whether physical or virtual, that enable data transmission between distinct segments of your network and the external environment. To configure interfaces, go to Interfaces and then Interface Assignments. If you haven't already set up the LAN and WAN interfaces, select the appropriate MAC address from the drop-down list for each. In my case, since both LAN and WAN are already configured, there's no need to go through this process again. They were configured automatically. I guess you can see the available network ports with a MAC address and an add button. This port or network can is installed but not yet configured. Let me assign the port as the opt port. We'll use it as the DMZ. Just click on add to add it. Click on the name of the newly created interface in the interfaces. When the configuration page for the interface loads, change description. We'll name it as DMZ. The additional network I'm planning to set up will serve as a DMZ, an abbreviation for Demilitarized Zone. The concept behind a DMZ is to establish a network where specific types of traffic are permitted while others are restricted. Typically, traffic within the DMZ can flow to and from the internet but is restricted from accessing other internal networks. In contrast, traffic from internal networks is allowed to move into the DMZ. In this scenario, potentially risky internet traffic, such as requests to a web server located in the DMZ, is permitted. Likewise, LAN traffic is allowed to access the DMZ, enabling users on the LAN to interact with the web server. Nevertheless, it's crucial to emphasize that no DMZ-originated traffic is permitted to enter or access the internal networks. Enable the interface as well then give it an IP address. The subnet should be different from the internal network save the changes when done. Opt-optional interfaces in PFSense provide additional flexibility for network configuration. For example, you can create a separate opt interface for guest devices. This allows you to isolate guest traffic from your main LAN, providing an extra layer of security. Isolating Internet of Things devices on their own opt interface can prevent potential security vulnerabilities and limit their access to critical parts of your network. Use an opt interface to create a dedicated VPN network, segregating VPN traffic from the rest of the network. You can use an opt interface as a sandbox for testing new configurations, applications, or services without affecting your main network. If you want to implement a captive portal for guest Wi-Fi access, you can do so on an opt interface. Remember, the use of opt interfaces requires careful configuration and consideration of security implications.
always ensure that firewall rules and access controls are appropriately set up to maintain network security. You also have the option to activate SSH. Enabling SSH grants you remote access to the PFSense console, simulating direct console access. Simply, in the Secure Shell section of the page, tick the Enable Secure Shell checkbox. As per the current configuration, a username and password will be requested when accessing the console remotely. Additionally, it's possible to log in exclusively using a public key. You can research how to set this up. Enabling Secure Shell in PFSense activates its internal SSH server, allowing PFSense to listen for login attempts on the designated SSH port. Save the changes when done. You can also set up VLANs on PFSense. For instance, you can set up VLANs for the finance department. Enter a VLAN tag from 2 to 4094 one is reserved as the default VLAN tag and should not be used. Leave the priority blank unless otherwise. Write a brief description of the VLAN. Click on Save when done. In the Available Network Ports column, choose the recently created VLAN from the drop-down menu. Then proceed to click the Add button. We shall look at how to create VLANs in detail in the next videos I will upload. Updating PFSense is a crucial task to ensure your firewall has the latest security patches and feature enhancements. In the Update Settings tab, choose the branch you want to track example, stable, development and set any other preferences. The system is up to date. Remember to back up your PFSense configuration before performing any major updates to ensure you have a restore point in case anything goes wrong. Always ensure that you have a stable internet connection during the update process. With PFSense you can also set up VPNs. Check out the video in the video description on how to set up an open VPN server on PFSense for remote users. The status menu in PFSense provides a variety of monitoring and status information about the firewall and the network. These status submenus offer a wealth of information for monitoring and troubleshooting your PFSense firewall and network. They are essential tools for network administrators and IT professionals managing PFSense installation. The Diagnostics menu in PFSense provides various tools and utilities for troubleshooting network issues and gathering information about the system. They provide valuable insights into the network's performance and help in resolving connectivity problems. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to setting up and configuring PFSense. Remember, this is just the beginning. PFSense is a powerful platform with a wealth of features waiting for you to explore. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech tutorials like this one. Thanks for watching, and until next time.